Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning grateful for the day that you've blessed us with. Lord, we just ask that you open our hearts this morning to the words that you have for us. Lord, we ask that you be with the sick, that you be with those who couldn't be with us this morning. Lord, we ask that you be with this congregation, with its leadership. Lord, we also ask that you be with those oppressed around the world, Lord, those who are facing crisis. 
Lord, we think of the Ukrainians, and we ask that you be in that situation. Lord, we praise you and we honor you, and we ask that your spirit be with us this morning, and we ask that our praise and worship be worthy. And we praise you and we raise you on high, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
sing the first, second, and last first. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're so glad to have you in worship this morning. We've got a couple of prayer requests and a couple of different praises that we have this morning. Uh, so we'll go ahead and talk about those. Um, if you remember last week, I asked for prayers for my grandfather, who will be having open heart surgery tomorrow. Uh, so if we can keep him and my family in prayers. That's why my mother is here in town is for that. So uh, you can go tell her all the bad stories about me after church. Just don't do it where I can hear it. <laughs> um, then we have a couple different prayer requests as well for uh, Larry Carmichael and Pat Shepard. Um, they're in the nursing home and they could just use some encouragement and prayers uh, as well as they are there. Um, and then we have a couple praises. Um, Pat is back with us today. We are so happy to have her back. I told her it looked kind of bare when I looked right without her being there, so <laughs> we're glad to have her back. Um, and then I put it on the prayer list uh, Tuesday night uh, for the, for the prayer, requ prayer request there, and I know Hunter sent out a message about it, but um, Craig Darledge had surgery this week um, to remove a spot of cancer. Um, not the first surgery he's had, but he came through it doing great. He does a long recovery process. Uh, ahead of him, but so that's a huge praise, but also continued prayers um, for the Darl for Craig Darledge, and of course for his family. So um, we need to make sure that we're keeping him in prayers and also being thankful for what's happened. So at this time, we're going to go to God in prayer, and then we are going to end at the at the end. We're going to sing the, or say the Lord's prayer uh, as we close out our prayer time. So let's go to God in prayer this morning. Father God, we are so grateful for the power of prayer and for the ability that we have to bring all of our needs, uh, the, all of our things that are on our hearts that are weighing heavy, and we can lay them at your feet, God. We are so grateful for that and for that ability we have for the relationship with you. Uh, right now, Father, as there have been requests that have been made, uh, God, I ask that you be with each and every situation because, God, you are the great physician and you know better than we could ever hope to about what what each person needs, each situation needs. So God, I ask that you would do that, that you would give comfort, that you give guidance, that you give healing uh, in each and every situation. And, and most importantly, God, that you would show up and show off uh, that each situation, there would be no doubt that it was God that was involved. And Father, for the praises that we have 
<clears throat> this morning. Uh, we're so grateful to see your hand at work, God, uh, and we're so humbled by that, uh, that the God of the universe, uh, the God of the universe is working in our lives, and we're so grateful for that. And Father, as we go through the rest of this time, uh, as we as we learn more about your words, we gather around the table. Uh, God, I ask that you would continue to fill this place with your presence this morning. And it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, guys, as we are getting ready to enter into our communion time, we're going to introduce you to a new song. We're going to introduce you to a new song. It's called Refiner's Fire. If you listen to Caleb or any, at all, you might have heard this song. Um, and we're going to sing it. The choir is going to sing it. Um, and we're going to sing it through, through the first verse one time. And then we're going to ask that you guys join in with us uh, for the rest of the song. And I want you to pay special attention to the words um, that are on the screen that you're singing. Um, and let them resonate in your heart this morning. Silver purify my heart, let me be as gold, you pure gold, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master. Ready to do your will. Sing it through with us. Let me be in pleasure, silver, purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold, be fine as One desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master. Ready to do your will. Second verse. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from within. And make me holy. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from my sin. Deep within, refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you. Apart for you, Master, ready to do your will. Sing the chorus through again. Be 
finest fire, my heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you. I am ready to do your will. Yes, I am ready to do your will. What a beautiful song that is. Now, as we enter into this time of communion... Do we understand uh, what refiner's fire means? We just sang about it. Refiner's fire we're to, is kind of a comparison to refining gold. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the, how you refine gold and how you get the actual gold bars that we're, none of us are ever going to hold. It, it, it's actually kind of an interesting process that goes through, and I, re, I read about it, and I want to read a little bit of it to you. I mean, it comes out of a mine, and it's, it's I call it an ore when it first starts. And each ore can have a higher or a low amount of gold in it, depending on what's inside. So the miners will take the ore that's out of the mine, and they will pull it out. And then it will be, it will be heated at that point to see how much gold is in there. And then it is, it is, it, when it completes this process, it's called a door, D-O-R-E. Now, when the next stage, the door goes through what they call trial by fire. It goes by trial by fire at a refinery. And it's in an extrication process to get the gold out and to purify it. The, it, the door is liquefied and reliquified then again in a furnace. Then it's put with a few other chemicals that separate the gold from any impurities that it has so that that way they can pull out just what is the pure gold and then it, when it's cooling they can shape it and put it into a gold bar or anything else that they're going to make. And I think it's interesting that we sing that song as we get into this communion time because as we gather around the table we're asking God to refine us. We're asking God every day of our lives to take away the impurities that are here within us. So we gather around the table. I, I encourage us not to think about our impurities, but to think about the pure one who is Jesus, who came and sacrificed his life for you. And that is why we get to gather around the table. We get to be refined by God once again in our lives, in this special time that we have with him so as you get the bread and the cup and as you go to God in prayer on your own I want you to think about how God is refining you and how he is doing that in your life and to just thank him for doing that for us and taking away the impurities that we have so let's go to God in prayer as we enter into communion time father God we thank you so much for putting in the time and the effort into each and every one of our lives. We are your children and we see what you're doing with us, that you're helping us get through uh, whatever difficulties we have, that you're able to remove all the impurities from our lives so that we can be pure, so that we can be exactly who you have created us to be. Father, we thank you for doing that for us. And we're sorry, God, when we go against what you want, what your will is. Help us at this time, God, to focus on what you're doing in our lives, what impurities you're getting rid of, and how we can become closer to you. God, we thank you so much for what you do for us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
so excited to be talking about unity again. I mean, really excited this month to talk about it. Uh, uh, it's just one of those things that when God lays something on your heart, uh, you get excited about it. Um, just before I get into announcements, next week, you won't have to hear me next week. We have a mission, mission coming next week, so please be here for that. We'll take a week off of unity. But, so last week, we talked about with unity... We had kind of a hard subject, talked about judgment and forgiveness last week. Talked about, <laughs> talked about why we shouldn't judge others, talked about why we should forgive others. And it was a little tough. It was, I mean, I was preaching to myself as much as you guys, and it's a tough subject to preach on. It's tough to think that maybe we do judge others, maybe we don't forgive others like we should. It's really hard to think maybe I'm doing something wrong. Well, this week will be a little easier for us, but not much. Not much. It's a little easier. Um, but if you have your Bibles, we're going to go ahead and turn to our, our theme verse that we have this month, which is Acts chapter 2, and we're going to start in 43. And actually, we're going to read farther on this week. We're going to read a little farther on, but we're going to start in verse 43, where it says this. <clears throat> Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles, and that those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions, and were sharing them with all, as anyone might have a need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, with gladness and sincerity of heart, and praising God having favor with all people, and the Lord was adding daily, to their number daily, those who were being saved. Now, last week I asked us to commit to, to writing down two names. Last week I asked us to commit to writing down two names and to praying for them every day. One was somebody that we can think of that we might have judged. The other one is somebody we need to work on forgiving. I hope that you guys did that because it's a great exercise for us. It's a great exercise to help us focus within. And we can see that these people, I read, I read back the early church and I read a little bit farther down because I wanted us to see this, that they were, they were, uh, they gave to anyone as they had need, but they continued to be in, of one mind as they met together in the temple. They continued to be of one mind as they met together in the temple. And I think that is the perfect example that we have of unity right here. I think that's exactly the unity that we're trying to strive for, is to be of one mind as we come into God's house and we get to worship Him. And we get the privilege of worshiping Him with no fear. We get that awesome privilege. We serve a God that hears our prayers, that wants us to pray to Him. And wants us as a unified body of believers or a unified family here at Valonia to pray and to be at one with Him. So we look a little more in depth this week about being unified and, be, and becoming, and be, becoming uh, one with unity. We're going to look at something that's a little more difficult maybe that we haven't thought about before. But first I want to ask a question. Who in this room has gone out to California and seen the Redwoods? A few of you? Isn't it awesome to go you driving through and see the Redwoods? If you haven't been, go someday or at least look it up on YouTube. It's wonderful. It's not the same, but it's awesome to go out and see <clears throat> these trees that look like they stretch to the sky. Big, they're, they're huge. And one of the interesting things is the redwood trees that are out in California are considered to be one of the largest living things on this earth. And they are actually the tallest tree in the world. Some of them span over 300 feet high, and some of them could be as old as 2,500 years old. Now, if you're like me, you'd think that a tree that big is going to have a huge root system. I mean, it's going to be feet feet deep in the ground, you know, however many, 50 feet in the ground. Roots are going to be bigger than my head. But did you know that the redwoods actually have a very shallow root system? They're actually more shallow than most trees that you see. 
And you might think, well, then how do they stand up? Because they get a lot of hard winds and a lot of things, and they've stood for years. Their root systems all intertwine. All the redwood trees, all the root systems stay up, and they all intertwine so that they can withstand whatever winds are coming, whatever things come to blow them down. The redwoods stand because they don't stand alone. Because the trees support and protect each other. And I think the same is true for us in the church. We stay, if we stay strong, then we're able to withstand the storm because we do it together. Because our root systems get interchanged. But we have to stand together. We can't stand alone. There's a beautiful verse in, the, in Psalm Psalm 133, and it's kind of interesting, it's so simple, but it's so true. Psalm 133, one, it's on the screen behind me. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? Read that again. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? It's an awesome thing, isn't it? We see this scripturally. We see all kinds of places where we're called to live together. We're called to be one. We're called to be like, you know, be like-minded. We're talk, we talk about all these things. And right here it just says it up so simply. Good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity. As we talk about unity, as we're going through the rest of this series, as we're getting, drawing closer in this Easter season, closer to the celebration of Jesus resurrecting from the dead. The one thing I want us to understand about unity is that unity is a choice. And let that sink in. Unity is a choice. Unity is a choice that each one of us have to make because when we intertwine our root system, when we, when we do all these things, when we choose to come in here and be at one with each other, you, know, you can't just kind of show up. The redwoods don't just leave and then come back and leave and then come back. The redwoods don't say, well, you guys are doing this. I'm just going to kind of step over here for a few minutes. I'll, you guys will be fine over there. Unity is a choice that each one of us have. And I think that's very important to understand about unity is that we have a choice to choose to be unified with our family here at Valonia. Now, it might sound simple, might sound like, yeah, no, that's, that's easy. And no, it's not. It's not always as easy as it sounds, but it's what we're called to do. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, I'm reading out the Amplified Version, we see this. Finally, all of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, hearted, courteous, and compassionate towards each other as members of one household, and humble in spirit. Called to be light-minded, unified in spirit. But in the later part of this, be really be kind-hearted, which in, in amplifies in the parentheses, and it says, be courteous and compassionate towards each other as members of one household. My mother can attest, I grew up in a household with seven younger siblings. I can guarantee you I was not always this way to, to all my siblings. In fact, I would even go as far as to say it was a rare occurrence when I was this nice to my siblings. I mean, I, that's just fair. Um, sometimes we bicker, sometimes we argue as, as a family, but this is talking about something entirely different. And it's another choice. We can choose to be courteous and compassionate towards each and every person in this room. We can choose to be courteous and compassionate to every single person that we meet. Do we do that all the time? I know I don't. And I have to be reminded of the choice that I make. And as I choose to be kind and compassionate and courteous, and as I choose to be united with my brothers and sisters here at Valonia, then I'm answering the call that God has placed in front of me. I can answer the call that God has placed in front of each and every one of us, which is that we be united as a church body. Now, the other 
subject matter we're going to talk about with unity today is kind of a recap for us. But the other important thing about unity is not only is it a choice, but unity requires love. Now, we spent the whole month of February talking about love to bring us to this, where we get to just kind of recap and understand what we're being called. Occupying himself in his retirement years, he decided that he was going to pour a new concrete driveway uh, right up to his house. He finished it, he smoothed it out, and then he went in to rest and to get a glass of tea. Returning later to uh, boast in his accomplishment of, doing, of finishing concrete, he discovered that all the neighborhood kids were putting their footprints and handprints in the wet concrete. The angry professor chased the kids that were put chased the kids down in a rage and beat the tar out of the ones that he could catch. Hearing the commotion, the professor's wife rushed out into the yard and she saw the angry professor thrashing the children and began to reprimand him and said, What a shame, she said. For 40 years you've taught love, forgiveness, and, for, and forbearance, and now look at you, you've lost your testimony. To which he replied, that was in the abstract, this is in the concrete. <laughs> we talked for a whole month about love. We talked for a whole month about it. We, we broke down the different types of love. We talked about how much God loves us and how much he cares about us as people. But unity requires that love. Now, I don't know if you remember or not, but we talked about different types of love and we talked about the brotherly love, the store J, brotherly love. How we're called to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. How we're called to love them as Christ has loved us. And we see that example in Acts. Let's go back to Acts 2 and read verses 46 and 47 again. Where it says this, Day after day they met in the temple and they were temple area, and they were continuing with one mind and breaking bread in various private homes. They were eating their meals together with joy and with generous hearts, praising God continually and having favor with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved. And that's from the Amplified Version. We see this example of love that they had for each other. I mean, they were doing everything together. They didn't just go to church together and then maybe we're on a board together or something like that. We see that every day they were getting together with each other. Every single day they were pouring into each other. Every single day they chose to love each other. Every single day. And God continually rewarded that. God continued to add to their number of the believers. They were a small group at that point, and God kept adding to their number because people in that, in that time frame, they could see this group of believers walking to the temple every day, and they could see something different. They could see something different about that group of believers. They could see the love that they had for each other. I'm going to read a couple of scripture verses. John 15, 13, we've heard these before with love, but we're going to read them again. Greater love has no one than this, than one that, to lay down his life for his friends. In Romans 12, verses 10 and 11, we see the Amplified Version where it says, Be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family, giving preference to one another in honor, Never lagging behind in, in diligence, aglow in the Spirit, enthusiastically serving the Lord. I read that Amplified because I think this is kind of a cool version. We'll read it again. Be devoted to one another with authentic, keep, keep that word in mind, the authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor, never lagging behind in diligence, 
aglow in the Spirit, and enthusiastically serving the Lord. That right there is the goal for us when we talk about love. That's the goal that we have when we talk about love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. That is the goal that we have right there when we talk about being a unified body here at VCC. This is what, when I say we choose, need to choose to be unified, this is the choice that we're making. We're choosing to live a life that displays the love of Christ. We're choosing to be devoted to each other in an authentic way. We're choosing to enthusiastically serve the Lord together in any way that He calls us to. There's not a way to have unity without love. There's no way to do it. When you look through and we read back on love, we can see there's no way that we can be unified as a body without love. It just doesn't work. Now, I want, to, I want us to think here real quick, put our thinking caps on. I'm not really doing this, I'm hypothetically doing this. If I were to take a poll here today at Valonia Christian Church and say, how many people want unity here? I would say everybody would raise their hand. Everybody would want unity, right? I mean, we, we can say that. But what if I followed up that question with how many of us are willing to do the uncomfortable and hard work that it takes to achieve this, this unity? How many of us are willing to, to get out of their comfort zone? How many of us are willing to do things that we might not be comfortable or might not want to do in the name of being unified as a body. I just want us to think about that. Because I don't know if you'd raise your hand or not, but I think that's the question you have to answer for yourself. Because loving people, and people meaning anybody besides yourself, is difficult. Let's just be honest about this. Loving people is difficult. Loving people can hurt you. Loving people takes work. And we already have full-time jobs. It takes work on top of that, on top of our family life. Loving people just takes work. And loving people, it ta to do that properly, it takes changing our mindset from a view of selfishness or thinking about me to how can I love others? How can I do that? It takes changing our mindset. So last week I asked us to commit to praying for two names. This week, I want us to commit to doing one thing this week that will help, another exercise that will help us as we strive for unity here at VCC. In your car, on your, de on your desk at work, wherever it may be, wherever it will remind you, I want you to write the word love. Or for some of you ladies, you might want to draw a nice heart. I can't draw a heart, so I'm not going to do that. But do something... Whether it's, write a, whether it's draw a heart, whether it's write love, and put it where you can see it. To be reminded this week that we, have, that we are going to choose unity and we're going to choose love. We are going to choose that. We're going to choose to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to choose to love everybody in this room, even when they're being unlovable. We're going to choose to love everybody that we come in contact with even when they're downright mean to us or they're downright hurtful. I want us to choose to respond in love. And I want that to serve as a reminder for us as we go through this week. As we continue to approach Easter, as we're in this Easter season, we're in Lent, as we continue to approach the day we can celebrate Jesus' resurrection the death, the burial, and the resurrection. I want us to commit to putting in the work this week to show love. To commit between you and God in your heart to put in the work to love others so that we can become more united as a family here at Valonia Christian Church more than ever before. And we will see God bless that. Let's go to Him and pray. Father God, we are so grateful 
for the love that you show us each and every day. Because God, there is no way that we can completely ever match that love that, we ha that you have for us. Father, as we as a congregation choose to love and we choose to work to be a unified body here, to be one as we come to worship you. God, I ask that you would help us with our commitments this week, that you would help us to choose love, that you would help us to choose unity as we go through and become closer to you. And Father, as we go through the rest of this worship service, as we go through the rest of this day, this week, please just pour your Spirit on us. Pour your Spirit on us that we can withstand whatever is going to come our way. That we can look to you, Father, and use the love you have for us as the example. Thank you, Father, for all that you do for us each and every day. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. As we come into this time of invitation, uh, this, is the, this is the great time. If you have a decision to make for Christ, this is that time to come forward. Uh, if you'd like to join our family here at Valonia Christian Church, this is the time you can come forward and join. But for everyone else that kind of doesn't fall in those categories, this is a great time that we have that we can put aside everything else and we can focus on Jesus, our Savior the author, perfecter of our faith, the one who loves us more than we can even fathom. So as we sing the song, Trust and Obey, let's stand and worship our, our Savior, Jesus. You walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, the glory sheds on our way whether is good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet although by his side in the way where he says we will go where he sends we will go never fear only trust and obey Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. All right, we have a couple announcements here real quick before we depart. Um, we're going to, reminder for Palm Sunday, we're going to do a pitch-in, and there'll be an Easter egg hunt. So there'll be more updates coming, but please put that on your calendar. We would love to have this time of fellowship with you guys. It's going to be a great time. March 10th. I was going to say, well, that's March 10th, I think. I don't know, I could be, I could be behind. <laughs> April the 10th. So please put that on your calendars. We're so excited to be able to do this. Um, another note here, located at, the, at each entrance of the church are baskets that contain prayer blankets. Please, please feel free to take one to give to anyone who may need prayers or comfort. And that's such a great thing that we have to do. Um, if anyone is interested in donating for Easter lilies, um, please see um, Mary Lou Greider uh, to get them reserved. The cost is $20, so please be sure to see her immediately about that uh, if you'd like to do it. And then next week, we will have Clarity here, uh, a mission uh, that's really, really awesome here in our county. Uh, we're going to have a representative here to talk about it. So please uh, come and be able to see what Clarity does and see the mission they have uh, right in our own backyard. Uh, so I'm excited about that, uh, that mission and that ability to talk with them. And we'll be able to ask them questions and be able to know more about them. All right. Robert.
Glenn will have to correct me if I get some of this information wrong. <clears throat> but sometimes good things happen here at our church that a lot of us don't hear about. In particular, our Sunday afternoon youth group. Glenn leaves with a bus an hour and a half early to pick up the children. Last Sunday he came back with 15, which by the way is full capacity on our bus. <laughs> And most interesting, this is the only church service that most of these children will attend that week. So a big thank you to all those involved for making this a huge success. Thank you. That's just part of the exciting news that goes on here uh, beyond just our worship service. And as a reminder, 4 o'clock tonight, Lynn. So... Um, we're, we're just so excited to have all the kids running around. we got kids running around downstairs. we got the teenagers that are here in the afternoons. It, it's just exciting to see God work. It's really exciting. So, uh, all right, if not, then nothing else, then we will go ahead and we will go to God and we will close with prayer and then we will sing our closing song. Father God, oh, whoops. That's awesome. Oh, huge praise for positive checkups. It's great to hear all the things that God's doing in our lives. It's great. So, I mean, let me do another scan since I missed out of somebody. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm hmm. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, then let's, uh, let's close with prayer as we depart from here. Father God, I am so grateful uh, that we can, we can all be in your house this morning, that we can all worship you. Uh, Father, I'm so grateful that we have felt your spirit here this morning, that we have, through every part of our service, we've been able to feel it, and we, we know that, Father. We thank you for, for refilling our spirits uh, today as we depart from here, as we go through this week. Um, God, please protect us and keep us safe uh, until we meet again uh, on the next Lord's Day. God, we thank you for also this time where we can uh, prepare for the celebration of Easter, the celebration of Christ coming to save us from our sins. Father, we thank you for everything that you do for us each and every day, especially for the things that we can't see. And it's in your Son, Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.